from the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max, Apple now allows you to record to an external SSD, and you can do this through the USB-C port. This means you can record Apple ProRes and send it directly out to the SSD external drive, which is a great way to capture the very large files. There's also a few flavors of ProRes that can be captured. We can use a third-party app, then you could choose Apple ProRes 422 Proxy, Apple ProRes 422 Lite, Apple ProRes 422, or Apple ProRes 422HQ. Each one of these basically has a higher or lower bit rate when capturing, with Proxy being the lowest and HQ being the highest and best quality. The native app shoots in 422HQ, and that's what I would use as it's the best quality capture and also has the largest file sizes. So be aware of that. Also, ProRes is recorded in 10-bit color. Now the 422 refers to color sampling, and this is known as chroma subsampling. So for every four pixels wide and two rows down, we sample two pixels on the top row and two pixels on the bottom row. And that's enough color sampling information to create an image. Now you might see with other apps, Apple ProRes 4444. This again is a color sampling. This takes four pixels wide by four rows down and then samples four pixels on every row. This is also normally captured in 12-bit capture for special effects and green screen, where they can capture greater color information. Let's turn on the ProRes function. Go to Settings, Camera, go to Format, scroll down, select the Apple ProRes button. Once you do this, you'll have a second option called ProRes Encoding. Click on this option, and we have HDR for High Dynamic Range Recording, SDR for standard dynamic range and log for that Apple log format for shooting in that log format if you intend to color grade the footage in post. Let's choose HDR for now for or high dynamic range. Tap back at the top left arrow, tap back again, select record video, scroll down to the HDR video and turn this on. This allows 10 bit color information when recording video in HDR and that's what we want and so it'll get as much dynamic range possible when we record our video. Now in the camera mode, choose video at the top of the screen or the left side if you're shooting horizontal. We see the HDR is crossed out. Tap this and our video will be recorded in ProRes HDR. At this point, it'll be recorded internally to the phone. Note also that we're recording in 4K 24 frames per second. Note if we change this to 4K 60 frames per second, we get a warning saying that 4K 60 frames per second is only supported if we're connected to an external storage device. So now if we plug in the external SSD, and note here that you, know, you need to use a fast read-write hard drive, so it must be the SSD type, like a Samsung T5 or T7 drive, or I like the Crucial brand, the X9 or X10 Pro drives. They're much smaller and their price are very compatible and their read-write speeds are really good. Once connected now, if we're at the 4K 60 frames per second and we activate the ProRes recording, we see that it says USB-C and the video will be recorded to the external drive. It'll create a folder called DCIM and inside of that folder is another folder called 100 Apple and your files will be in this folder. Finally, now Apple has introduced Apple Log and an option that we can record in. This is a true log file format that you get on a mirrorless camera or a DSLR or something like that. It's a game changer for phone footage. As we know, log format is a very flat and desaturated image that helps prevent the highlights and shadows from getting blown out or clipped. It also has a lot more information collected and better dynamic range so it can be manipulated in post to get the image that you want and the color grade you want. Remember, log is not the finished look and it has to be post-processed. Not only does Apple Log help get rid of that iPhone camera sharpening that everybody says is a telltale sign of phone footage, and Log just makes it more possible to achieve that cinematic look that we all strive for. Also, Apple Log turns off local tone mapping something that we had no control of previously. 
even if you lock the exposure on the iPhone screen, local tone mapping would still be in effect and the algorithm would try to adjust small changes in light and dark across the scene so that it would try to get the best image that it could. But now with Apple Log, tone mapping or local tone mapping should not change and you can affect the highlights and lowlights in post as you see fit. Now one of the real life drawbacks is a very flat footage which is really quite difficult to see in bright daylight. However, Apple has created a LUT that you can use to help create a grade to your Apple Log footage to Rec. 709, the monitor standard. Now, however, in the native app, there's no way of loading this, this LUT so that it gives you a visual LUT, so a look. You'll always be stuck with the very flat image. However, in one of the third-party apps, you can load the LUT and it'll overlay the LUT as a visual so you can see what it would look like once the flat image was graded. This also makes the scene a lot easier to see in bright daylight. In the Blackmagic app, go to Settings, LUTs, and under LUT Selection, you can load in the Apple Log to Rec. 709 LUT, or any other LUT that you want. Now when shooting in Apple Log, you can toggle on the Display LUT button to have a visual overlay of what the image will look like once it was applied in post. And this makes the flat image easier to see in daylight. In Cinema P3, with Apple Log selected in the format setting, make sure you're in the creative mode, hit the cube at the bottom of the center, and here you're able to view your image in Apple Log mode, so the flat image, HLG View Assist overlay, or Rec. 709 View Assist mode. Although log files seem intimidating at first and a lot of people shy away from them, the more you film with them and see their potential in post, the more you'll use them and you'll see the power that you can get in post and you'll become more comfortable with the, this exciting format. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.